win, you know, beating Syracuse on the road, you know, certainly a, one of the top teams in the country do for your program. Certainly you've had more interview interviews you've done for other shows this week. What does but, that do for your program? You know, it gives a, a little, little national attention, which is good. Uh, you're able to, um, you know, everybody saw the game or saw the results and different things like that. Uh, so for a day it's great, but then you, you have to move on. You know, in this league, if you're – the next day, if you're thinking about what you did in the last game, it puts you in a tough position for the next one. So we've moved on and getting ready for Virginia Tech. All right. Now look at, oh, look at Virginia Tech, your last regular season game. How does that – then you've got potentially a slew of four or five games in a row coming after that one. So how does it – when you look at this game, you know, how does it – you approach it as your final home game, your final regular season game. But how does that – is that almost the warm-up for the ACC tournament? Yeah, there's no warm-ups in this league. You know, you, you got to – this is uh, – uh, the most important game we've played all year because it's the next one on the schedule. It's senior night. Um, our seniors have given us a lot. Uh, last year we weren't able to send off Mufon and Pierre the right way. We had a tough loss against NC State. So it's important that we play well. You know, we did some good things on Tuesday night. Um, now, you know, a step in the process is to, you know, continue to do that and then continue to uh, build on that those positives that we had on Tuesday night, and it's really important that we do that Saturday afternoon. Now, everyone talks about this, the Syracuse zone defense. It's almost this like foreign outer space thing that's oh, it's from Mars or something. How do, what works so well offensively for you guys against this, you know, supposedly superior, you know, this top-notch defense? Well, you know, we, we had a, a, a solid game plan, but the game plan is only as good as the players, and our players did a great job. Uh, they never lost their poise against their, their half-court zone, and even when they started extending it, uh, which was different than what they've shown in the last four or five games. Our guys responded well to it. We got the ball underneath it. Our big guys made really good plays. Our guards made some good drives and, and, and drop-offs to some bigs. Uh, and then we made just enough shots, you know. Uh, the, the theory that you have to hit 10 to 15 threes against them. Uh, we weren't going to get a lot of open looks on the threes because the way we were attacking it, they really extended out more so than they have in the past. Uh, so I thought, you know, our guys did a good job of that. It's it's different. You don't see it. They have great length. But as I said, you know, one of the things that I think hurts their defense as much as their offense is they're not as big in the back line without Grant in there. And that's a big factor because he's long. He gets a lot of steals. And from the weak side, he's able to defend post players. And that's where we were able to exploit them at times. On that back side, we had a post player going against – their wing or their guard as opposed to Grant and that was a big difference and that was a big positive for us. All right, so when, it, uh, when you played in Carrier Dome you had a 28,000 fan. Where does that, I mean, does that, where does playing in a venue like that, I mean, where does that rank among some of like those, you know, the toughest venues to play in? How does playing in a venue like that so close to the ACC tournament get you ready for going up against the potential fan bases of Duke or Carolina? Yeah, well, you know, obviously it was a great environment for college basketball. We were there the night before and the day of and we talked about uh, you know, that it was going to be a big crowd. It was senior night for them. Uh, but what, what did we need to do to take the crowd out of it? And then our guys did that. And you have to do that when you go on the road. And we've done a good job on the road. We won at Georgia. We won at Wake Forest. Um, won at BC. Won at Syracuse. Uh, won at Charlotte. We've had some good road wins. So our guys have been good in terms of just kind of blocking out any distractions when you're on the road and just trying to take care of business. So you guys beat uh, Syracuse two nights ago. Wake Forest beats Duke last night. What does that say about the competitiveness of the ACC? Well, I, I, again, you know, and I don't know what, what we need to do, but, um, you know, when those things happen, when uh, Nebraska wins in the Big Ten or whoever wins in whatever other league, it's, oh, you know, what a strong conference it is. And with us, it's uh, Duke isn't playing as well or Syracuse isn't playing as well. You know, and, and that's just, I think one of the things that we have to constantly fight in this league is we have four or five programs with such strong national brands and such strong national name recognition that people outside of our league are stunned when they lose to someone else that maybe doesn't have that recognition or a team that's on the upswing. Like, like I take, for example, Clemson, you know. I did an interview yesterday, and the guy asked me, what is it like being in the ACC when you play Syracuse and Duke and Carolina and Pittsburgh? And 
next year in Louisville. I said, hey guys, you forgot the ACC champion, Virginia. And it's just that's, we, we as, as we've created this new league, that's a, a, a huge objective is we need to make sure that people know how good the league is from one to 15. I mean, I remember I've talked to you before about you know the competitiveness of the league, but you know with Louisville coming in and just seeing all the the, new, the former Big East schools coming in, I mean, is this becoming you know could this year in and year out be the best conference in the country, seven or eight bid league? Well, it should be, it should be. You know when I look at some other leagues and they're talking about six bids for some other leagues, um, I'd like to see the sixth place team in, in some of those other leagues come into the ACC, and that's no no disrespect to them. It's, it, you know, we play 18 games, and that's a long grind of a season. Um, tough venues to play at. You've mentioned Syracuse, Duke, but Wake Forest lost, what, two games at home this year, maybe three, one of them to us. Clemson is a tough place to play. Uh, go down to Miami, you know, go to Florida State. I mean, those are tough venues to play at. And so, you know, we have the, the Virginia's, North Carolina, Duke, Syracuse, Pittsburgh. Those five are, are, should be locks, but when I look at it and you see what Clemson has done, you see what Florida State is doing, a, guy, a team that's on the upswing right now in NC State, um, you know, those teams are not only good enough to play in the NCAA tournament, they're good enough to win two or three games in the NCAA tournament. Coach, uh, Robert Carter and Trey have both put a couple of back games back to back, you know, even with the Florida State and Syracuse and whatnot. Do you see, do you see some momentum building not only with those two but with the with the group now that those guys are kind of getting their feet back under? Well, again, I, you know, and you've heard me at nauseum talk about the rhythm and flow of a team, and I mm -hmm. think you have the individual rhythm and flow, and then how that kind of starts working itself into the puzzle of the team. Mm -hmm. And I think over the last couple of games, we've been much better at that. Um, guys are getting more comfortable again, the rotations, the you know, what's expected of them. Um, and just their, their feel on the court together again. And I think, you know, even when they were playing, they weren't in practice or whatever the case might be. And I, I do think you're starting to see us gel again. You know, if I looked at some tapes from earlier in the year, and the difference in some of the you know the flow of our uh, the way we played, and two of those guys that were playing then aren't aren't going to come back this year, but the rest of them are, and I think we are starting to kind of come together in that. Both um, both Robert and Daniel, I think, uh, kind of lamented a little bit after the game the other night that. Hey, you know, this is a great win, but it makes me think about some of these other games that we came so close in and we couldn't quite get done. Maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, it's getting late now, let's get it done feeling maybe permeating. Yeah, you know, again, you, you, uh, unfortunately, when you, when you win games, uh, especially as a coach, you look back on some of the missed opportunities. Or, mm -hmm. or hey, The thing is, you can't dwell on those. You have to take advantage of what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what those guys are saying, but I also thought the undertone was that uh, we have a lot of basketball left and we're going to take advantage of it. So I thought that was good. Mm. Ken's question to them was really good. <laughs> <laughs> what is, uh, what is Cam meant to you, your, your three years here? He, he, you know, um, he's a battler. And you have to have those in your program, especially when you're rebuilding. Uh, guys that bring it every single day. And as long as he's been physically able to, and even times when you knew he was hurting a little bit. It takes a lot f for me to talk him out of practicing mm. and going out there on the court. Um, and uh, he's been through a lot with that, that knee injury and, and some of the consistent soreness and, and, and so forth that he, that he has. But you know, he's one of those guys that brings it every single day and you, and you need those guys and, and he's been invaluable for us. As I've always said, you know, since last year, always viewed him as a starter. He's played starter minutes. His his role, his uh, impact, is that as someone who who has to you know really do a lot of good things for us. Mm -hmm. And um, you know we wouldn't have made the progress over the last three years without him. On senior night, how, how tough emotionally is it for you? Maybe you know say goodbye to these players that you've you know, been with three or four years at a program. It's hard. You know it's hard. And, and at the at the same time, uh, if you've been through it long enough, you know that's part of the part of the deal. 
you know, um, unfortunately I wasn't able to recruit these seniors other than Trey. Um, but we spent a lot of time together and we've been through some tough times together and, and uh, those guys have remained, as I said, positive and, and diligent in, in trying to get this thing turned around. And for that, I'm, you know, not only proud of them, but it, it, uh, I owe them a, a lot of gratitude for that. Because lesser guys would have not, con you know, even from the start, uh, you know, continue to fight the way those guys have. What is uh, Cam's personality? How does it kind of fit into the your, your kind of? He, he, you know, he's he's a, a, a quiet guy, except behind the scenes. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, he's a well liked guy, and and uh, he's genuine in everything he does, and he uh, he's been raised the right way. There's uh -huh. no question about that. Um, he's one of those guys that is going to be successful. And no matter what he does because of that. Mm -hmm. he, he has an unbelievable care for other people. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I think that, you know, and what's interesting is as a player, he's very aggressive individually, which is good. Right. But uh, nothing's more important than the team and nothing's more important than his teammates. And he's obviously had a role in, in helping Daniel become the player. He's yeah, been, you know. yeah, I think those two guys have kind of fed off each other. And, and um, I, I think... One of the things that's really important in a program is that the players develop the mentality. They, the most important thing is to not let your teammates down. And I think Cam has really been a, at the forefront of that, you know. And so I think he sets the tone for that for a lot of guys. And um, I think, you know, everything is contagious, good and bad. And uh, he's brought a lot of good. I'm curious, um, you've obviously been in the league a ton, but at least compared to the last two years, you know, obviously, you know, Wake won last night, they beat Duke. Has there been more of that uh, kind of unpredictability or maybe there's more parity, I guess? I think, I think all the teams have gotten better. Yeah. So I think the gap has shrunk a little bit. Uh, you, I said it earlier, you know, I think there's a perception outside of our league uh, where it's, you know, Duke, Syracuse, North Carolina, Pittsburgh, right. you know, um, you know, and, and then – people are stunned when something else happens. You know what I mean? Right. And if you look at it, Virginia won the league this year. Miami won the league last right. year. Hmm. Florida State won the ACC tournament the year before. Right. Uh, it shouldn't come as a surprise. Right. Um, hmm. And we need to get to a point when Wake Forest wins that game, it's not Duke's fault. It's something right. that Wake right. Forest is pretty good at. Right. You know, or us in Syracuse or, uh, you know, uh, North Carolina State at Pittsburgh. Right. You know, those those games in other leagues are, man, does that, that they, act, they use those as statement games for how good the league is. Right. Right. Sometimes we use those or they're used in, in our league as maybe that team isn't quite as good. Right. Huh. You know, writers might even go to the point of saying, well, maybe Syracuse isn't quite as good. You know, when they, because they lost or whatever the case might be, they're pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, you, 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 they've had a bunch of close games in our league, and so now I think some people say, well, maybe they're not that good. Right. Look what they did in the non-conference against who they played. You right. know, and, and uh, huh. uh, you know, so I think that's um, that's something that we need to keep cultivating. Yeah among the illustrious media and <laughs> experts around the country.